see washes away all of my sin Washes away all my sin Jesus washes away all of my sin Jesus, he washes away all of my sin Washes away all my sin Jesus washes away all of my sin Jesus, he washes away all of my sin Washes away all my sin Jesus washes away all of my sin. Jesus, He washes away all of my sin. Washes away all my sin. Jesus washes away all of my sin. Jesus, He washes away all of my sin. Washes away all my sin. Jesus washes away all. Something's been stolen Under the weight of the curse you've been broken You're not what happened You're more than the shame you were recklessly from falling Wishing they'd poured out enough to break through the hurting And Jesus runs after the broken ones Weeping with those who weep Crowns them with Shake the feeling 
He's not in a rush, he has time for your healing. Lean on his shoulders. It's never too much, and your story's not over. You could go back in time, rewrite your own ending. Then you find faith to believe it's just the beginning. I'm gone. 
So I just had a moment in my office, literally right before coming out on stage, where I just asked myself a very simple question. What does Easter mean to me? And I know that Easter is different this year. I'm preaching to an empty room. It's incredibly awkward. I'm honestly a little uncomfortable because I would love nothing more than to see your faces in person. But I also love that in the midst of all of this, you're at home with your families, that you have a family there, and that you're able to share the love that Jesus has with you and for you. See, Easter, and really this year, I've kind of gained this new perspective on it. And when I asked a couple of minutes ago in my office, what does Easter mean to me? Like it kind of took on a brand new meaning. Because Easter is this moment where you have this day called Good Friday and then Resurrection Sunday. And we call it Good Friday, but I don't see anything about it good when you go back and look at it in Scripture. Like when you Google, why do they call it Good Friday? It's basically just like, well, they call it Good Friday, meaning that's the day of. But when it says the day of, it's talking about like the day of darkness where it just like looked like the world got darker. There was pain, there was abuse, there was Jesus being betrayed, there were disciples walking away from their faith, there was tears cried, like Peter confronts his worst self on Good Friday and he walks away like with so much shame and it just looks like darkness is winning on Friday and it looks like that everything will never be the same and that these people's lives are just completely going to have to adjust to quote unquote a new normal. But what I love about Easter is it didn't stay that way, that even in Good Friday, they had to know because Jesus told them that Sunday was coming, that it wouldn't always stay Friday, like there won't always be trouble, there won't always be things that come up that just change and alter our lives but Sunday is coming and on Sunday what it shows us is that Jesus will be faithful to every promise that he has made what Sunday shows us is that in the face of darkness doing everything it possibly can do to withhold the light that Jesus will rise above it all That in spite of all of hell trying to stop this event from happening, that nothing could contain our Jesus. And ever since that moment, he's been winning every battle he has ever been in. And in our world right now, like this is so awkward and this is so different. And it just seems like there is darkness and fear in every news broadcast and bad news and death and all of those things. But I just want to tell you here right now, Sunday is coming. Like this is not going to last forever. Our churches, they will reopen. Your businesses will reopen. If the thief has stolen anything from you in this season, maybe you lost your job. Maybe some of you have lost your health. Maybe some of you have lost maybe even a family member. But here's what I know through Jesus. Sunday is coming. There will be a restoration. There will be a better job. There will be more people in church than ever before. And for those of you who feel like you've lost a loved one, if they know Jesus, there will be a restoration in heaven where forever all of us will have an eternal Easter where we worship a risen king. Sunday is coming. And I just want to prophesy by faith right now that it's coming a whole lot quicker than everybody out there in the world says it will come. Sunday is coming. Jesus is Lord. This is changing. 
Because we all have our Fridays that are frustrating and fearful and upsetting, but darkness does not win. Jesus rises above it all. Sunday, it is coming. Now, what I want to focus on in, in this season is that fact that Sunday is coming. But here's another question I want to ask is, what's the purpose of Good Friday? There's a scripture that's been in my heart here recently, just in my own walk with Jesus, and it's found in the book of 1 Peter. And I would invite you, if you're at home and you have your Bible close by, to open it up to the book of 1 Peter. And if you didn't have a Bible or don't have a Bible, or maybe you're watching this off of your phone and don't want to open up the YouVersion app because it would then kill the live feed, Uh, just relax. We'll put it on the bottom of the screen. But in 1 Peter chapter 1, it says something in verse number 5. It says, you who are kept, one translation says shielded, by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the right time, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season... If need be, you are in heaviness through a manifold of temptations. For the trial of your faith is much more precious than gold that perisheth. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and the honor and the glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Now, several things stand out to me about those scriptures. The first is verse 5. It says, you who are kept or shielded by the power of God until the time of salvation. I don't want to be kept by the power of God. I don't want to be shielded by the power of God. I want to be saved by the power of God. Like, I don't want to be saved uh, or just shielded in the lion's den. I want to be saved from the lion's den. I never want to go in in the first place. Like, I I not uh, want to be just shielded in the fire. I would love to be saved from the fire and never go in. But yet, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went into the fiery furnace. Daniel went into the lion's den. Jesus told a parable and he said, you know, there's two people who are building their homes and one builds it upon the rock and lives with faith in God and constructs their life off of that. And another one builds it on the sand. There is no faith in God. And a storm comes and hits both homes. And it's like, well, why do storms come? And the answer is in the world that we live in, it has fallen. And there is a thief who is out there. And as long as we're in this world, there is going to be testing and there's going to be fires. There's going to be lion, tigers, and bears. Oh my, there's going to be lion's dens. There's going to be Saul's who throw spears. There's going to be brothers who throw us in pits. There's going to be death. There's going to be seasons that, like Peter wrote, are just manifold in their temptations, that not only is there a virus out there, but maybe some of you have lost your job. And it's not just this thought of like, will I get the virus? It's like, how am I going to feed my family? Like when all of this is over with and it's just all of these temptations, what is it? It's Good Friday. It's this moment where it kind of looks like, you know, there's darkness. It's just kind of creeping in into our world. And it's like, what in the world is going on? And God is like, here's what you need to know. In all of those seasons, I will be your shield. Like you can be in a lion's den and come out with no wound. Like you can be in a fiery furnace and come out not even smelling like smoke because I will be your shield. But he says, in this moment, while I am being your shield, here's what I want you to do. And it's like, okay, great. What do you want us to do? Verse 6, I want you to greatly rejoice. And it's like, what are you talking about? Peter writes and he says, while God is being your shield, wait until the day of salvation because Sunday is coming. But until Sunday is coming, no, God is going to protect you. God is going to be your shield. And in the middle of the fire, in the middle of the lion's den, I want you to greatly rejoice. And it's like, why would I greatly rejoice in a season like this? He answers the question in verse 7. He said, because in seasons like this, here's what's going to happen, is your faith is going to be tried by fire. And he said, it's just like gold being tried by fire. Your faith is going to be tried that same way. Now, a couple of months ago, I preached this message called Work Your Wilderness. And I talked about this very thing of gold being tried by fire. And we said, you know, you have all kinds of gold, right? You've got 10-karat gold, 14-karat gold, 24-karat gold. 
And what makes them different is their level of purity. See, some gold is more pure than others. And he likens Christians this way, that there are some Christians, there are some believers who are purer than others. And what makes gold pure is some gold has impurities that are in it. And these impurities make the gold incredibly hard. But when you look at the gold, you can't see it. It looks like the other type of gold. But when you get it in fire and you heat the gold up, what happens is, is that the impurities begin to rise to the surface. And what was unseen is now seen. And what you didn't know was there is now there. There have been moments over the past couple of weeks in my life where I have seen tension come up in my soul. Like there have been moments in my, over the past couple of weeks where I have seen like a little bit of fear, if I'm being honest, kind of come up in my life. And I'm like, whoa, like where did that come from? Like I have seen God meet my needs so many times over the past of the, the last 18 years for me and for this church. Why am I afraid of that right now? And you see these impurities begin to rise. Like even for me and Pap, I'll be honest, like we're, we're parenting three kids in this season. So they're all homeschooled. And it's like, wow, I'm just thankful they're still alive, if I'm being honest. Like we haven't killed any of them. So we're all good. I'm kidding, kids. You're, you're God's best. You know you are. We loved you and have loved you every day you have ever lived on this planet. But sometimes, you know, you, yeah, I'm kidding. But here's here's my point, like in these moments, it's like, uh, you know, we have these times in life where we go through things like that. And it's like we're being tried by by fire, and me and Pep were talking about our kids. And we're like, you know, this is going to be, especially for the oldest two, my, my oldest two are 13 and 12. For the oldest two, this is kind of the first moment of life where, like, life got incredibly real. Like, I can remember uh, September 11th, uh, I was 18 years old, and I never will forget exactly where I was when I heard the news of those planes flying into that building. I remember every vivid detail. And for our kids, like, this is that moment for them. Like, they will never forget when this virus came in and just disrupted everything, and everything changed, and we're doing school from home, and they never will forget this moment. But here's the thing, didn't we see with September 11th that Sunday came, that God has come through and rebuilt our nation after September 11th, and now it's a story we tell? Did you know God's going to do the same thing even with this, that this may be a Friday, but Sunday is coming, and the goodness of God is going to transform this nation? It's going to be a quick rebound, and out of this, we're going to see more people come to Christ through Easter than ever before. But even in the midst of, of all of these things, when, when God is at work and in these moments and in these seasons, like this will be a story we tell that none of us will ever forget where we were at and what we were doing in this season of life. And me and my wife, we asked, what kind of story do we want our children to tell? Like, what do we want them to remember about this season? So we even tried like in our home to like have as much fun as possible, to have as much family as possible because one day from now, this will be a story we tell, and we want them to tell a good story, a life-giving story. But what about in this season of life for you, not just for your family? Like, what would God do in this season? While I'm shielding you, greatly rejoice. God is shielding you. He will provide for you in this season. He will protect you in this season. But while he is shielding you, why should you greatly re rejoice? Because in this season, God says, I also want to refine you. Like there are some things that I really want to adjust in your heart. There are some things in this season I want to adjust in your family. There are some things that maybe like this great slowdown that we've had happen, what Satan meant for evil, God can turn it around and work together for our good, that maybe in this you do some soul reflection where you see, like, my faith really can get deeper. Maybe in this season, like, some impurities kind of rise to the top, and it's like, you know what, I really do need to grow in patience. Maybe in this season, like, your worry that is surfacing can lead to greater worship, and your panic can lead to greater praise. And Maybe during this season, it's like, golly, like I see how I've allowed so much misinformation to just lead me over into fear. Like in this season, maybe your story could be, I finally recognize the importance of the word of God in my life. 
Maybe through even not coming to church, like physically, maybe in this season what you're learning is that I can do church at home and my kids are watching. Maybe in this season you realize, like, I don't just go to church, I am the church. But God says, I think, two things for Easter is in Easter 2020, and what we're just wanting to major on is that two things. Sunday is coming. This is going to pass, and this is just going to be another foe that Jesus beats down, and his grace just supernaturally wipes away every remnant of this virus, because Sunday is coming. But while we are being shielded, what can you learn in this season? While you're being shielded, what can God just do in your family and do in your heart? What work is he trying to work in you to refine your faith and take you? I think the key word, this is the word I'm majoring on in my life, into a deeper surrender. See, the reality is, is none of us are perfect. And some of you watching this, you may be thinking right now, it's like, Pastor, you have no idea how imperfect I am. And it's true, I don't. But I do know this. Jesus loves you so much. And I don't care who you are, what you've done, no matter how filled with fear you are, even if you were like Peter who denied Jesus, Even if you were like Peter and maybe in this season you found yourself following afar. Maybe even like Peter, like you've just gotten so caught up in fear like Peter did when he looked at the wind and the waves. But maybe through all of these temptations, it's just revealed those weaknesses in you. And in your weakness, instead of you feeling shame for being fearful or following afar or denying Jesus instead of you majoring on your weakness in this season, that you take into account what the great apostle Paul said, that in our weakness, he is strong. That in our weakness, God can work with our weakness. That God can work with our feet of clay. And whoever you are, no matter how long you've walked with Jesus, or maybe you're just starting, that in this season of being tried by fire, that we know Sunday is coming, We lift up our eyes. But also in this season, we kind of examine our hearts and say, Jesus, I want to go deeper with you. Jesus, I want to surrender to you. Jesus, I want to give more of my life, more of my family, and more of myself to you. So right there in your living room or wherever you're watching today, on CBS, Facebook, on YouTube, however you're tuning in, I want you to do something. I want each and every one of you to surrender your heart to Jesus in a fresh and a new way. That Sunday is coming, but in the middle of being shielded, we will greatly rejoice because we're coming out of this, not only promoted, but purer than we have ever been before and genuinely more surrendered. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for each and every person who's watching this for every family member. And Father, right now, we just lift up the the whole body of Christ to you and the whole world. And we thank you by your love and mercy that you are drawing all men and women to yourself. Father, I thank you that each and every one of us tell a story years from now of when this virus hit our land, that it led to a greater surrender. Father, I thank you that there may be some who are watching this who feel like you could never forgive them, but I thank you, your grace meets them right where they are at. Father, we love you, and we stand here today united all over the world saying, Sunday is coming. This Friday, it is not lasting forever. Sunday is coming, and it's coming soon in Jesus' name. And Father, in the middle of this Friday, all of us greatly rejoice because you are our shield. And Father, we are coming out of this pure and more in love with you than ever before. In Jesus' name. Now, if you just made a decision for Jesus Christ, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to our website at thelife.cc, hit the tab called Following Jesus. And from there, you can fill out the information. Let us know you made that decision. We'll be in contact with you. We'll mail you a book. I'll even mail you a t-shirt. I'll do something just for you to let you know Jesus loves you. 
We want to continue our worship experience with you with some amazing songs we're going to sing in worship because we all know Sunday is coming, Jesus is risen, and just like he rose above all of hell, he is rising above this virus too. Sunday is coming, Jesus is Lord, and he is madly in love with you. Let's worship the Lord today.
Spirit, 